Now, this part of the question is quite tricky and it's very long. And in questions like this, I would suggest you draw three diagrams. I'll take you through these diagrams. What we've got essentially is in this first one, let's call it one, all right? What we've got is the two particles start off at rest. And we'll just mark that in that A is going to move downwards. It starts at rest, so we'll just put a zero there. And B also is at rest and it's going to start to move upwards. A travels down, hits the ground, and at the same time B travels upwards. We don't know what speed A just hits the ground at. We need to find that, okay? So that's what's happening in the second diagram here. A hits the ground. So let's just put that arrow there and let's say that this is the final velocity of A, V with a subscript A. And when this hits the ground here, B will be moving upwards with exactly the same speed but in the other direction. So this will be the starting speed of B before the string becomes slack. So Let's just mark that in that B is moving up. It will start off, let's call it U, B. That's the initial velocity of B. And it will be equal to the final velocity of A, VA. We'll have to find these quantities in a moment. All right? I'll show you how we do that. And then what happens is that B was initially at this level here. It started off then with this initial velocity, let's call it UB, and then it rose to a height where it just instantaneously came to rest, and that's going to be zero. And because the string is slack, it's under the acceleration due to gravity which acts downwards so over that section there let's mark an arrow acting downwards and the acceleration due to gravity is G. Now we've already seen that whilst the particles are connected that A descends with an acceleration of a quarter G so going to mark that in that A goes down with an acceleration of a quarter G or G divided by 4. So let us just label these diagrams. We've got 1, 2, we've got stage 3 there. Now what I need to do first of all is try and find out what this speed that A hits the ground at so that I can transfer it to B. So to do that I'm going to tell the reader that I'm going to consider diagram 1. Alright, so we we'll just say that up there. And if I'm looking at that, we're looking at the motion of A. Alright, motion of A. So we'll start with a SUVAT equation S, U, V, A and T. And what do we know? Well, we don't want to know S at this stage, so we'll leave that out. The initial speed, U, is going to be zero, because it started from rest. The final speed, well, that's what we want to find out. The acceleration we know is a quarter g as a descends, so we'll just write that as g divided by 4. And the time, t, well that's what we know. We're told that it took 1.2 seconds for a to reach the ground, so t is 1.2. So we can put all of this together and select an appropriate formula that leaves s out. And that would be V equals U plus AT. 
So the final velocity, the velocity of A, we'll just put that in as therefore VA equals U. Well, U is 0, so we can leave that out. And so it's just going to be A times T. So that's going to be a quarter G, or G over 4, multiplied by 1.2. And if you work that out, what you get is 0.3 G. I've left the G in because I think you'll find that leaving the G in will make this problem fairly easy. You can type in G as 9.8 into your calculator if you like and work with decimals. But as I say, I'm going to just leave the G there. OK, so that tells me that A hits the ground, or just before it hits the ground, it's moving with a speed of 0.3 g meters per second downwards. So this means now that B starts moving upwards with a speed of 0.3 g. We also need to work out how far A is above the ground so that we can eventually work out the total height that B goes above the ground. So we now need to find out the distance that A falls. So let's just put a little subtitle there for distance A falls. All right. What we'll do is again need a SUVAT equation, so S, U, V, A and T. We want S. We know that U is 0. We know that V is the 0.3G. So put that down, 0.3G. A is G over 4, a quarter G. And the time T was 1.2 seconds. So what could we use to find S? There's quite a few formulas that we could use, but the one that I would prefer to use here is going to be S equals U plus V times T divided by 2. So using that, what we've got is S equals U, which is 0, plus V, so that's going to be 0.3G. And that's going to be multiplied by the time of 1.2 and divided all by 2. And if you work that out, what you find you get is 0.18 g. So A falls 0.18 g meters to the ground. And what that means is that we can add this anyway to the diagram. Let's just put a dotted line through here, all right, all the way to there. So what that means then is that we now know that this distance here is 0.18 g meters. And it also means that B would have gone up here, also 0.18 g meters. So putting that together, okay, means that we've got to double 0.18 g. And what that's going to be is going to be 0.36 g, that distance from there down to there. So I hope uh, you've got that, okay, that's 0.36 g, two lots of 0.18 g. Okay, so that's that bit. Now, we move on to the next bit and we want to know how high B continues to travel up. B was here, that's just say here, okay, when the string became slack and it just travels up this extra distance here. So what we need to do now is to consider B. So let's just put here consider B in stage 3, we say. OK? Right, now, we need to build up 
a SUVAT equation again. Let's put S, U, V, A, and T. Now, S, let's just say S is this height that it moves here, okay? Put a little H there for that height. So S is going to be H. What is U? Well, U is the initial speed that B moves. We found it here. It was the speed that A hit the ground at, and that was 0.3G. So we've got 0.3G there. V, the final speed of B when it reaches maximum height is 0. A acts downwards, so that's minus 9.8, or the acceleration due to gravity. Let's just write that in as minus G rather than minus 9.8 time it takes? Well, we don't know that, so we don't need to have that in our equation. So, what are we going to use this time to connect these? Well, we'll use v squared equals u squared plus 2as. So that means that v we know is naught, so we've got naught squared which is naught, equals u squared, that's 0.3 g all squared plus 2 times a, a is minus g, and we're trying to find s, which is h. So if we rearrange this, we end up with 2gh, if we add this term to both sides, equals 0.3g all squared. Well, that's going to be 0.09g squared. And if I divide by 2g, we end up with h equaling 0.045g. So we've got the height now that b rises under gravity when the string is slack. So in order to find the total height now that b is above the ground, what we need to do is add this height to the 0.36g. So therefore, to get the maximum height that b is above the ground, okay, maximum height of b above ground, just put that in there, is going to equal then 0.36g plus this height here, 0.045g, and that essentially gives us 0.405g, and if we enter g as 9.8 in on your calculator, 0.405 times 9.8 gives 3.969, and that will be meters. Okay, so quite a long, tricky problem, but I hope you've been able to follow that, and that brings us now to the end of this question.